Hey guys, thanks for watching this week. We're going to continue on, kind of like what we did last week with the bodywork prep, trying to get this thing, this old Chevy pickup truck, you know, as close to ready for paint as possible and still do a good job without, you know, skipping too many steps. I want to show you some of the work that I went through that I just didn't have time to show in last week's video to get this thing to a point where it will be stable again. Also, I'll share with you a few tips, tricks, maybe, you know, that I know in regards to the body work and prep. Also, get you up to speed as to where we're at. So, thanks for watching. So one thing that I did that I'm super glad that I went through the effort to do is pull out this front windshield. You just couldn't tell how bad it was until the windshield was removed. There was quite a bit of rust and corrosion underneath that rubber windshield gasket that had I left it the way it was and just kind of lifted up and dusted some paint under it, it would have not been long at all had you know, had this thing set out in the weather that that rust would have bubbled right back through that new paint and a lot of my effort would have been wasted. So if you're in a similar situation, you might as well go all out because that's really, really what's required, I guess, to get a as close to a factory-like job as possible. These trucks were also bad about leaking through that windshield gasket and rotting out the floorboards. And that's what was, I think, is what caused the majority of the corrosion on my floors originally. So this should solve that. Are you, are you getting a, a harassed? Hey, Bobby, Bobby, hey. <laughs> Bubba. I think he wants to play. You got a Sasquatch on your shirt. Mm -hmm. People think uh, the noise that I heard uh, the uh, other night, some people think it was a Sasquatch. Mm. I got a little Sasquatch on Did he? Okay. Well, call him back. So I have spent all day since daylight, actually, since daylight occurred, that's been hours ago, by the way, sanding till my fingers hurt on this cab to get it ready for a hopefully final shot of primer. We're gonna shoot it with some urethane primer. Let me take you out here, show you where we're at, you know, what I've been doing, my plan. Then we'll mix up some primer and then we will hopefully spray it before it gets dark, maybe even the doors. Potentially a hood, I don't know, we'll see. Let me show you where we're at and we'll get, get moving. So I had to do quite a bit of work to this windshield channel. It was starting to get pretty rusty. I'm definitely glad I pulled the windshield out. Anyway, got that all cleaned up, ran a bead of heavy duty seam sealer around there after I got all the rust off of it and ended up removing some of the paint down here and under this balance just because it had to be done to get all of the rust out. And I'm gonna be priming this area too, which most people don't do simply because it's hidden and nobody sees it. But we're gonna shoot it with some primer just to protect it. Plus we had some rust right here, right? So it just made sense. We'll do this in conjunction with the cab. But first, you know, I'll bring you down here. I'll let you I zoom in on this spot here on the other side. And then we will wipe down the cab, mix up some primer and spray it. So if you look right here, right here, zoom your eyes down there. Right below where the hood, or right beside where the hood latch sits, there's a piece of rubber there. And on both sides, it had started rusting here. This side was worse. Kind of took an angle grinder, zipped all the flaky rust off, and then a die grinder cleaned all the pits out. So once this is primed, you know, that'll be protected. And I'm glad I caught that before, before it got any worse. So I said I wasn't going to do any body work on the back of this cab, but I did because you know, it needed it, really. I did not try to get it perfectly straight, but I did feel a few dents, the ones that were, you know, in your line of sight. So we're gonna wipe this thing down. Man, sand in these backs of these cabs. It's a ton of finger work. And these windshield, ch 
channels. So we're just going to take a real high quality rag. And we're going to wipe this down really good. Because even if you blow it off, it doesn't matter. You really should wipe them down. Because you'd be surprised how much dust is still on these. Even if you blow them off with, you know, 100 PSI of compressed air. Then all of the little pockets and around everything. If you want your primer or paint to stick, you know, you gotta not only blow them off, but wipe them off as well. Get in the, this line, this cab line there as well if you can. I'm going too short. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll get it. That dust just sticks so well. I need to scuff inside of that groove. I didn't get that good enough. So last week we sprayed a high build polyester primer on the pickup truck and for that really thick soupy primer I had to use a 1.8 millimeter tip. The biggest tip that I can actually get for this uh, HVLP gun. This primer surfacer that I'm going to be spraying on is a urethane product. It is a 2K primer from Eastwood and if you get any of these products all you got to do is download the tech sheet. It tells you all the surface prep that you need to do to get the product to stick well because why wouldn't you want it to stick? It tells you the tip that you should use and this suggests anywhere from a 1.2 mil to a 1.6 mil. So we have a 1.3 mil tip here we're going to try and uh, we'll swap it out from the 1.8 and then We'll even cut the stuff with a little bit of urethane reducer. That way we get a nice even spray. And you know, I want it to lay as good as possible. I'm hoping that it will. So let's swap out the tip out of this spray gun and then we'll mix up our primer surfacer and spray it on. So this is a Develfa starting line spray gun sent to me by an awesome viewer. These are the air horns which you can choose whether you want your spray pattern to be horizontal or vertical or really anything in between simply by rotating this 90 degrees. This was sent to me by a viewer about six, four or six months ago. really appreciate it. Let me show you how easy it is to change out tips on this thing. So we are going to first remove the needle. Spring clip, 1.8 mil needle. Now we'll remove our 1.8 millimeter air distributor or and needle seat. And we're going to change those parts out with the 1.3, just a smaller, smaller orifice, that's all. Place the needle and the spring. And I run the settings on my spray gun wide open. I control the airflow right here at this valve and at my regulator. And that is it. I like to be able to vary how much product comes out of here depending on how much I'm spraying. I don't like to limit myself, you know, right off the bat with, uh, you know, by restricting it at all. So I just leave everything where it's wide open. Or air horns. Just for Screw right back on, and that's it. All right, changed out that quick. So now let's mix up some primer and see if we can't get it on the truck. So this is a four to one mix ratio, and we're also, depending on how thick it is, we may cut it down with a little bit of urethane reducer. So this stuff sprays on and lays down really good. We don't want it to be, we don't want it to be too thick. We're going to have to mix this stuff up really good. You can see the chunks at the bottom. You do not want to just pour this stuff out of here without mixing it good. Look at that. Those solids are just piled up in the bottom. 
So once we get it stirred up and we stop getting chunks on the bottom of our paint paddle, we're probably good enough. And I'm going to try to pour this without making a mess. I'm going to make myself a little funnel out of some aluminum tape. Let's see if that'll work. This is just some th just thick aluminum tape. Watch me not be able to get the paper off of it. Sometimes I fight with this stuff. There we go. Maybe. Yes, maybe. That will allow us to pour out of this gallon without it running down the side. So I don't want to mix up too much. We do this cab in a couple of sprays. So we'll go up to the number three. Wow, I can't believe that that worked as good as it did. So last week I showed how to use these cups. Extremely easy. So this is a 4 to 1 mix ratio, just like what we used last week's. And since we went up to the number 3, we're going to go up to the other number 3 in the second column. And I'll see with the consistency of this stuff and if I need to thin it down. I will. I just try it like this, see how it sprays, and then next go around, you know, thin it out a little. It says I can thin it out anywhere from 5 to 10% with the urethane reducer. I think this is going to spray okay, but we'll see. mistake to do that and then it gets all over your cap all right let's go spray it so I'm going to start uh, spraying the roof because I have to stand up here to spray it and I'll have to wipe this back off spray the balance
So I've already sprayed this hood once. Just one, one coat of urethane, black urethane primer. Blocked it out, and I didn't like what I found in a couple spots. It was a little thin. I should have really went two coats, but I didn't. So now I gotta go back and do it again. Shoot another layer on it to get where I wanna go. But the reason I'm showing you this is because I scuffed this hood down, I blew it off with an air hose, I wiped it with a cotton towel, and still, look what come off of it after wiping it with a microfiber towel. So if I was to spray primer on this hood before I wiped it with this microfiber towel, look at all the dust that was on this. And really, you'd just be spraying on an ultra-thin layer of dust, and, you know, your layer of primer is just not going to adhere good, because it'll be sticking to all that dust. So, these are awesome in the shop. And now, I'm going to stir this up, look at the consistency, really... You know, I want this stuff to flow out pretty level so it doesn't leave such a peel, an orange peel texture on that hood. Let's see what kind of viscosity we get here. I may give it just a little splash of the urethane reducer. It says that I can use anywhere from 5 to 10 percent. Basically, what that means is very little. Hopefully, just enough to thin this out. Just enough to where it sprays really good. Put a little bit of this is just urethane, medium urethane reducer. Just a little. And a little bit, you know, maybe all it takes. Now, I'm not sure. Yeah. That was below 10%, probably So now that we got a couple coats of urethane on this and it's dry, me and Elizabeth are going to do a little wet sanding. And we've just got some paint sticks with 400. All right, and we're just going to take the peel, the orange peel, and knock down all the little spits and sputters that happened here and get this hood smooth and flat. You just want to take your water and just rub it in the surface. It'll start sticking to the surface once we get it scuffed up. And you just want to keep it wet. Right, there's your water. And just light pressure with your... I mean, really, you just want to let the, uh, let the paper do the work. Just hard enough for, for it to cut. That's it. Nothing else. And keep it moving. I don't know if I'm doing high enough. Well, I mean, if... Yeah, you'll get the hang of the love. You can run over the edge like this, this edge here. You can use your, your paddle can make, in, in fact, you want to do it. Let your paddle hang over the edge a little, just a little. And sand, that way you get all the way out to this edge. Not, it's, there's nothing hard about this, and I'm no professional at it, but 
you know there's only this only works in the flat areas and and I you, did a bad you huh? I did a bad thing. No. I can go. I can quit. No, I don't want you to quit. <laughs> You're doing just fine. Go this one way, all the way from one edge to the other. Not just as far as you can go. And don't let, like I did, don't let the side of your paddle cut into it. Once it starts, you know, Good once man. it's, yeah, then go one way. Go the other way. And the reason why we go one way and then go the other way is so we don't you know, cut grooves in anything. We're kind of removing the grooves we cut. From our one pass on our next pass and so on and you just hope that it turns out good and it will as long as we just try to stay consistent this is kind of stuff you do out of the sun when it's cool in that cooler anyway in the afternoon What we're doing is per basically getting this surface slick so when our paint goes on, you know, it's one less lumpy surface to make our paint lumpy. Yeah. Yeah, you can do circles. Keep it moving. It's looking pretty good. I think you almost got it. We got a little, a little right, yeah, uh, right there. Way. Yeah, yeah. It's still got a little. You, you need to focus a little more on right in here and along this edge. Yeah, you've got the middle pretty good. This guy don't do that. What do I do? Really, that would probably work just fine, but it'd be but we got enough enough primer on here where we can, you know, work this out. Work over here some. Working up to this line from the middle of the hood kinda down. Alright, so it looks like it's just me and you now. Elizabeth bailed on me. <laughs> I can't blame her. Actually, she had to go get my daughter from work. But Wet sanding is one of those things that just seems like it's going to last forever. But really, this uh, urethane primer sands pretty easy. And as long as you can lay it down smooth, you know, it doesn't take very long. So I guess my hood blocking session is over for the moment, anyway. Cause it's raining. So on the jams, I'm just using a foam block, soft actually, it's a pack of foam, right? It's $400. You don't even have to the sand these jams, really. But I am, nobody pays attention to it. You know, they open the door, they get in, and I never really pay attention to the pain in the jam. I'm sanding them anyway. 
storm spiel at him. That's it. Not trying to block him for flat or anything, but still not sanding with my hands because I don't want to leave a bunch of lines. I still want a nice smooth finish. Not what we really do on a hood. I try not to sand in the shop because it does make a mess. Fans blowing or anything, you can kind of contain it to a spot and sweep it up. It's raining outside, and you don't have much choice. So you'd never know that you know, this area was completely cut out of this truck and replaced. You, know, you would have to get up under it, unless you had like super trained eyes to get up under it and, and even, even be able to tell. Yeah, she's looking good. She's eating some sunflower seeds. Yeah, she always liked sunflower seeds. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'd want to hand feed her now. No. Little crowbar. But it's amazing that they can, you know, go out in the wild for months and, yeah. you know, come back and you know, just like that, like they never left. She looks good and healthy. Mm -hmm. Nice, slick. Slick fur. And a nice little poofy tail. Yeah, poofy mm -hmm. little tail. Yeah. What was this our sixth squirrel? Fifth or sixth? Peanut. Walnut. Walnut chestnut. Chestnut. Hazelnut. Lug nut. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Walnut. Little lug I nut mean, didn't make it. Yeah, lug nut. Yeah, we never showed lug nut. Yeah. And clover. Yep. So that's a lot of squirrels. So really five. Not really, but yeah. Seven. We've got a bunch of them eating already. Yeah, she's munching. She's a hungry, hungry little squirrel. She's been. It's been two months since we let her free. I'd say, wouldn't you? Close to that anyway. She's done well. Mmm, excuse me, thank you for the coffee. Are you excited to see this get done? Elizabeth. That's how I can see you again. So I can, yeah. <laughs> Elizabeth uh, is kind of uh, interested in getting one of these for herself, actually. She's long bed, short bed, doesn't matter. Probably be a two wheel drive. You know, something we can, uh, you know, something that's in pretty decent shape that doesn't require completely <laughs> redoing, right? So maybe in the future, you know, who knows when that'll be, but you know, we're potentially going to get another one for her. Me. For her, yeah. <laughs> maybe, uh, right, a C10. Just like this, except two-wheel drive. Lower it a bit, just a bit, right? Some nice wheels, they look awesome. And uh, and then we'd have semi-matching pickup trucks, which is pretty good. So we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully it works out. So for the front end of this truck, when I took it apart, 90% of the 
bolts and nuts and stuff were either in the wrong place or just completely missing. And when I, I'm thinking to myself, when I go to put this thing back together, I'm going to have a, just a heck of a time trying to source all the clips because there's a lot of little custom, not custom, not one-off. What's the word I'm looking for? Vehicle specific. Push-in clips, screws, stuff like that on the front of this truck. And I was kind of at a loss for where to find them. But luckily a viewer of the channel, his name is Craig Marshall. He's just right up north of me in Ohio. He actually came down, paid me a visit. We talked for a couple hours. Great guy. And custom, not custom. Vehicle specific clips and screws and stuff, hard to find, is what he does. And he hooked me up. He did not ask me to plug his business or anything. But I'm gonna because you know I really appreciate what he done. And I think it would be a service to you guys if you need anything like that, uh, to contact him. So let me show you what he hooked me up with. You know, and if you need something like that, you can, you know, contact him yourself. So there's Craig's email, autofast at regan.com. And in this box is pretty much every fastener, push-in nylon, nut, you know, clip that you can imagine for the front of this pickup truck. Stuff that is not at all easy to find. Stuff that you never even plan on replacing when you tear into a vehicle like this until you find that half of it's missing or broken and that people have put in just about any old fastener in order to make it work. Go to your parts store. Try to find that. Right? There's like four different, three different ones, I think, in the front of this truck. Three different sizes. And uh, Craig had them all in stock. So that was really, really awesome. And anything that he didn't have in stock, he was very willing to source you know, and find for me, help me out with. So that was very nice of him. So go check him out if you have a need for fasteners and stuff that may not be that easy to find because he definitely knows where to get them and has probably the majority of them so thank you craig definitely appreciate that this will make the front end of my truck secure again and not flop in the breeze like it was all right so i guess that's it this week talk about a monumental job strip down an old vehicle that was as junky as this thing was do all the panel replacement, all the body filler on every panel on this thing, which was dented all the pieces, and then try to repaint it and do a you know, halfway decent job on it. It is a big job, that is for sure. I don't want anybody to underestimate how much work you know, a total respray is because it takes a ton, a ton of physical effort. And that's why paint jobs are so expensive, resprays or color changes, because they involve so much effort or rebuilds or restorations, right? So it won't be long though. This thing will be in color and we'll be driving it down the road and I will smile from ear to ear because I will feel like it is well-deserved as much work as I've put into this thing to bring it back around. I'm sure it feels better because it was ready for the scrapyard. Now, when it comes to painting, I'm not an expert, I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do. I can do body work really well panel replacement, body filler, right, stuff like that. That's what I did for a very long time. But as far as painting vehicles, that wasn't my job. So I'm still, you know, I'm learning just like anybody else would, right? So if you do decide to do some of this work for yourself, just know that a lot of these chemicals are very toxic and you don't want to be breathing this stuff in. You will not be long for this world if you do, or your quality of life will be so poor that, uh, you know, you'll regret spraying some of these products without some of the proper you know at least some sort of filter that will take care of this stuff because they're dangerous and not only are they dangerous but they're relatively expensive so protect yourself protect your investment read the instructions that come with this stuff that way they do the job that they're supposed to do without hurting you in the process because if you don't put them on right you, know, you just went through all the work for nothing so I'm trying to do the best job that I can. And, you know, still, like I said, still learning along the way. I'm not perfect by any stretch. So I'll be glad to get this thing completely primed and sanded. And then it'll be time for paint. So got uh, some exciting news coming, hopefully, if it all works out. I'm not 100% for sure on it yet. So look forward to a big kind of reveal on, on a part that uh, I got for this pickup truck that is going to make it a much nicer truck than what it would have been otherwise had this not happened. So look forward to a little, little surprise on this thing. So I think that's it anyway. 
Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, it's much appreciated. Think of your vehicle's paint as its shield, because that's what it is. So, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes.